Hi everyone, this is Rob Gray from Arizona State University and the Perception in Action podcast, and this is vlog number seven. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of acting to perceive. And this is going to be an issue that I'm going to bring up in an upcoming uh, edition of the podcast where I'm going to dive into the topic of virtual environments for use as in sports training. And what we're going to see is that being able to interact with a virtual environment in the way that you do with a real environment, that is when you move and you look around, things in the visual imagery of the, the environment change accordingly, is really, really important for the reason I'm going to demonstrate today. And that kind of simulating that kind of um, interaction between, with a virtual environment is often called a dynamic egocentric viewpoint. And I'm going to discuss all these issues in detail in the podcast as I mentioned. So I think most people are willing to accept the idea that we need to be able to perceive to act, right? If I'm going to hit or catch this ball, I need to be able to perceive its motion, its speed, maybe its distance, depending on what I'm trying to do. But it's equally important that we be able to act to perceive, right? So if I simulate you moving your head or your eyes by moving myself, you'll see something gets revealed, right? There is another ball behind this one, right? So there's a sim really simple demonstration that by acting on the world with a head movement, you revealed something new perceptually, the presence of an object that you didn't see there before. So that's a really simple demonstration of how acting uh, can reveal occluded objects. But the story is much more rich and, and advanced than this. Because when we move, whether it's an eye movement, a head movement, or actually physically getting up and myself moving through the environment, we create very rich sources of information. In particular, things like optic flow, which I've discussed before in the podcast, and motion parallax, which is the, the thing that I'm going to demonstrate today. And although I'm going to exclusively focus on visual information in this demonstration, Exploring and acting on our environment also create information for our other senses. For example, with the sense of touch, or what we commonly call haptics when we're exploring our environment, if I move my hand across the ball, I perceive its roughness. If I push on it, I perceive how hard it is. Both of these are sources of perceptual information that I can use to help control my grip. So by, again, by acting on the ball, I'm creating more inf perceptual information. And this type of, of haptic information was uh, studied and really well analyzed by one of my former instructors as a graduate student, Susan Lederman, and her longtime colleague, Roberta Klatsky. And they, they coined the term exploratory procedures to describe how we use haptic information to gather, haptic movements to gather more perceptual information. So check that out if you're interested. But anyway, the demo I want to do today um, is one that was actually created by my PhD supervisor, Martin Regan. And it's included in this uh, really great book that he wrote, Human Perception of Objects. He actually give, It's part of the bookmark. I'll show you in a second because I don't want to give it away. Um, so Martin, what he actually did was he created this demo drawing it by hand. Okay. And he um, based it on, a, I believe, a Victorian children's book, a, a kind of a, a little game that was in, included in one of the books. So let's take a break here and go off and, and look at this demo, and then I'll come back and explain what it means in a second. So this is when I'm not moving. So hopefully you can see there's not much there to be seen in the environment. I'm not acting on my environment. All I'm seeing is a bunch of squiggly lines. Now I'm going to simulate a head rotation by moving the camera. Okay, when you can see that, hopefully you can see something's popping out. The bird, right? So movement in my environment is creating information. Right, I'm seeing an object that wasn't there before. And if I go back to not acting, it's gone. Okay, here's another demonstration of basically the same effect. So when I'm stationary, again, all I see is a bunch of lines. I don't see much information. What I'm going to do is simulate turning my head 
So I'm going to simulate turning my head and look when I look at the far objects in the room, I'm going to the camera's going to adjust the focus similar to the way my eyes did. Now when I look back, there's the bird again temporarily until I adjust my focus again. So again, refocus, come back. There was the bird. So again, movement creating information. Okay. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Um, what you saw there was uh, two examples of how uh, acting or simulating some types of movements created information, right? Created perceptual information. Suddenly the bird appeared when it wasn't there before. And the reason that those, both of those worked were because the bird and the lines were actually at different distances. What I did was print out a transparency of the bird uh, on, on overhead transparency. Amazingly, I could still find those and printed out uh, the lines and I had them at different distances. And though the distance difference created a, a couple effects, okay? The first one the, in the first demonstration was motion parallax, okay? So when we move, okay, when we move our head or move our eyes, the way that objects move across our eye depends on how far away they are, okay? Objects close to us move by relatively quickly, whereas objects far away move relatively slowly. And you can demonstrate this to yourself very easily next time you're in a car, right? Objects, uh, depends a little bit on where you're looking, which I won't go into in detail here, but when you're in a car, the signposts on the side of the road will, will fly by, where the cows on, out there in the field will slowly drift by, right? That motion difference created by the different distance, different difference in distance is what made the bird appear, right? As soon as I started moving, the, because they were at different distances, they did different relative motion and it bird popped out. The second example was basically a demonstration of the effect of distance on blur, right? So when we fixate our eyes on an object, if I look at, you know, this book here, I can't keep both this book and a, distance object, a distant object in focus, right? You can only focus clearly at one distance, okay? So that means any objects separated in distance, you know, there's going to be a big difference in the resolution of my image, right? The one I'm fixating on is going to be high resolution, very clear. One further away is going to be a bit blur blurry. And that's exactly what you saw in that demonstration. The uh, once I switched the camera and made it change its depth of focus, it, w it made the bird pop out. Okay, so those are just two kind of simple, fun examples showing you how acting on your environment, moving, creates perceptual information. And this can get much more complex and, and interesting when we look at things like sports, right? You can see this all the time if you watch carefully, right? A point guard in basketball might dribble to a, a particular point on the floor to see how the defense reacts. Or a football quarterback might pump fake the ball to, be, to be, tell whether a defense is playing man-to-man -man or a zone, right? In both those cases, the goal of the athlete was not to score, right? The goal of the athlete, the goal of their movement was to create more information, to improve their perception so they could go on to score after that, okay? so. Acting to perceive, okay, being able to enrich our perceptual information by moving and interacting with our environment is incredibly important. And that's why it's extremely important to do this right in a virtual reality or a virtual environment if you want to have good sports training, good transfer to sports. And as I mentioned, that's what I'm going to be talking about in a couple weeks. So I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. This is Rob Gray from ASU and the Perception and Action Podcast. Cheers for now.